As a community, we are so fortunate to count Assemblyman Marcus Crespo as an alumnus, an advocate, and a friend. Um, can may I call you Marcus here? Uh, Marcus has been a champion of the Latinx community and immigrant rights. He spearheaded relief projects and aid and the rebuilding efforts in Puerto Rico. He's a strong advocate for greater diversity and Latinx representation in government, education, and cultural institutions. And his leadership as former chairman of SOMOS has been invaluable to our community. And having not missed a SOMOS since I've been here, it, that, that takes a lot of work. And, and we appreciate it. And he always hosts us when we, um, when we go out for some of us to allow us to connect with our alums, so we're very grateful for that. And his continued support for John Jay and CUNY is um, indispensable. We appreciate it, we do not take it for granted. So please give a warm welcome to the Honorable Marcus Crespo. Buenas noches. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam President, to Mindy, to the team, to everyone who reached out and, and allowed me to be a part of this. Para mí de verdad que es un orgullo estar aquí, celebrar eh, lo que es la herencia hispana, la herencia latina, quiénes somos, de dónde venimos y qué representamos. Eh, dado a que estamos, somos parte de la conversación en todos los ámbitos políticos, sociales, pero no siempre parte de la mesa de decisiones. Uh, pero estas celebraciones son una oportunidad para hablar de estos temas darnos cuenta de los logros de cada uno de, de nosotros y ver la manera en que juntos podemos cambiar esa dinámica. For those of you who are bilingually challenged, I just said, hey, what's up? Uh, I, uh, a little bit about me. So besides the fact that I came to John Jay, I was born in Guayama, Puerto Rico. Papi is from Lima, Perú. My stepmom was from Cali, Colombia. My first love, long-term relationship from Mexico, uh, but my wife, the mother of my children, the love of my life, and she's good friends with my ex, that's why I can bring it up, uh, is from the Dominican Republic. So what I am is a confused Latinx. I'm gonna write a book on that and finally become an academic through it, but um, I can relate to uh, my father's immigrant story. My father came as an undocumented immigrant, hiding in the storage room of a shipping vessel. He was a merchant marine in Peru. Um, and that's how he came to this country. Mommy grew up in Puerto Rico. Uh, and because of problems, personal problems in, in the family, la mandaron pa Brooklyn, send her to Brooklyn to live with a family member. And she met dad and forget it, the rest is history. Um, but we, we never had, I never had any permanency. Uh, I was asked the other day, what has been the longest address I've had in my life? It's sadly been the legislative office building in Albany. Um, I went to four high schools, three junior high schools, three elementary schools, studied in Peru, I started in Puerto Rico, studied in Florida, Dade County, um, and different neighborhoods here in the city, different schools. And all that moving around was just a result of the way we lived. Uh, we weren't in the military, we weren't the poorest family out there, but we struggled and dealt with real life issues and were constantly changing our environment. Um, but I, you know, grew stronger from it. Uh, my brother struggled with the challenges of all that change. Um, and we've all kind of had very interesting, different lives. Uh, but I've had a real opportunity um, that I found here at John Jay. Um, because when I first came here, I had no idea why I was here. Um, I signed up at high school. I remember getting my transcript. I didn't know that the back of it was an application for college. I had no idea what college to put. I asked the kid next to me, what are the name of colleges? He named a bunch of CUNY ones, and that's how I ended up. I got a letter from John Jay. I, I couldn't afford it to the young lady who spoke about, and, and what a, an amazing story of, where is she, Priscilla? And you know, the fact that you were so thoughtful about the commitment your parents would have to make. I thought about the same thing. I was talking to a recruiter for the Marines because I cannot afford it, and I know my dad couldn't afford it. And uh, luckily, at that same time, I got a letter from John Jay that I was not only accepted to John Jay, but I got accepted to the SEEK program, and I want to shout out the SEEK department. <laughs> and that I would get my tuition paid and a stipend. I felt rich. So I remember taking the train from, from, I lived in Bedford Park in the Bronx at the time, and beside, while we're giving shout outs to the Bronx, I gotta shout out my judge, Justice Wilma Guzman from the Boogie Down Bronx. <laughs> um, I, I, I'll never forget that coming here, I had no idea why I was here. My father was a painter, I knew I was gonna do labor work, and, uh, but while here I realized that there was a world out there separate from everything I knew from the block and the neighborhood and things that were different from what my family had experienced. And it was here in the internship department that I found out about an opportunity at, in Albany. And while I was a government major, I'll be honest, I had no idea what the assembly was. Uh, but I go up to Albany and I meet a young man named Ruben Diaz Jr. 
and I interned for Ruben, and he became such a mentor and a good friend. Uh, he offered me a job. It turned out to be with his father, Reverend Diaz. I took the job. I survived the Reverend for five years. And in 2009, he runs for borough president. I had no political ambition, and there was an opportunity to run for the assembly. And I took it, and it's been now 10 years that I've been in office. And in those 10 years, I've seen uh, so many things that were, I was oblivious to and the impact they had on my family. For example, how many of you know the name Angelo del Toro? And if you don't know the name Angelo del Toro, I need you to look up the name Angelo del Toro. Because Angelo was one of the Latino leaders. By the way, you should check out Jose Rivera while you're at it. Because those two were in Albany when... There was a famous uh, uh, debate, there was a, I forget the year, but there was a, a, a serious debate over the budget. And there was an impasse. And the members of color of the assembly and the Senate were upset that there were no resources coming to our communities. And so they held their votes from the budget process. And at midnight, they stormed to the second floor. If you haven't been to the Albany, the Capitol, you should, you should learn this history. They marched, a group of them, among them Arthur Eve and Percy Sutton. But with them were Angelo del Toro and Jose Rivera. And they marched in and they demanded resources and they said they wouldn't agree on a budget until something came back to us. And you know what that something was? The creation of H-E-O-P and E-O-P. By extension, the creation of the SEEK program. Avenues that have allowed so many of us to have this opportunity to be here. So we have to know that history. We have to look into that history because A, some of those people are still around. Their legacy still exists. And B, none of us got here on our own. And so what is the commitment? What does it mean to just celebrate our culture and heritage? Yes, let's talk about the issues affecting our communities. Let's talk about the political issues, the social issues. Let's talk about our pride and who we are. And I can talk about that all day. I love my food, my culture, my music. I can't dance. That's the only thing. But, but the one thing that I really want to leave you with is this. If we're serious about representing who we are, then don't try to change the entire world. Don't go and tell yourself that unless you're leading some massive viral movement on social media, then you don't really have a platform. No. Each and every one of you with the way you treat others, how you comport yourself, how you impact your family and your community, how you use your time and resources and network to empower others to be raised up with us. We want to talk about the lack of representation and leadership. Yes, it's offensive what's happening to Latinos in the state and across the country. We are 22% of the state population. We are 4.5% of the state workforce. That's an embarrassment. At SUNY, up until a couple of years ago, 30-something campuses, never in our history did we have a Latino president of a SUNY campus, yet we make up 20 plus percent of the student body. And it wasn't until recently through uh, the advocacy of many people and the amazing accomplishments of somebody named Javidan Rodriguez do we have the president of UAlbany. And so, we can make more inroads like that. What did we do? We demanded the creation of a new program at SUNY. And I'm harping on them a little bit because we're at CUNY, we could do that. But also, because let's talk about it. CUNY has done a lot better, could do more, but it's doing more. And then we see that represented in somebody like Felo. But at SUNY, we created something called HLI, the Hispanic Leadership Institute. It's a pipeline. It's a program that takes Latino faculty and administrators that are not in those positions of dean and provost to move them up the ranks so that hopefully there, many more of them are in that pipeline for presidencies. And I don't care about token leadership. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about making sure that we are represented in the places we tell people they can be, but also that I want to see leadership that understands that they got there with the support of others and that their main responsibility is that while they have that opportunity to lead, that they are raising the next generation. I don't know how long I'll be an elected official, but I want to know that while I was one, I helped a bunch of other folks, directly or indirectly, have an opportunity to achieve what I have or, God willing, a whole lot more. And that's what institutions like John Jay does. It's not just the curriculum, it's the network. All of you together staying in touch with one another. I don't care where you end up working or where you end up working. All of you can help each other along the way. That's what, how we strengthen our communities. And that's how we create pride in who we are. In the Bronx, I take a lot of political heat because I also serve as a Democratic Party chair. And people talk about how the role we play in the process. Well, let me explain something to you. If it wasn't because we're represented and have an opportunity at the table, the process worked extremely well. Nobody had a problem with the process while it was other people using it to protect the interests of other people. All of a sudden, you got a black man like Carl Hasty, Speaker of the Assembly. You got a black woman like Andrea Stewart Cousins, Leader of the Senate. You got a Puerto Rican County Leader in the Bronx. You got a couple of other, oh, oh, we got to change the structure. There's, there's, everything is corrupt. We got to change the narratives. It's like every time we get close, the rules of the game have to change around us. 
let's question some of these things. And I'm not perfect, and nor is the system or anything like it, but I'll tell you what I've done. I've had an opportunity, as I've been county leader, I, in the last four and a half years, there have been about, my number's a little off, but somewhere between uh, 13 to 15 new judicial openings in the Bronx. And one of my roles as county leader is to help with the nomination of Democratic candidates for those judgeships. You know what we've done with those? We have nominated out of the 13 to 15 positions, I think 90% of them have gone to women candidates and every one of them are women of color. We have only a small amount of time to make an impact, but I assure you, every little thing you do in life, everything you say, how you speak, how you represent yourself, the impact you have, and how you use that to help others is the only real way of not only demonstrating our pride in who we are, but making sure that cultural pride isn't just something we wave on one given day down Fifth Avenue, but rather something ingrained in the work that we do to make sure that it is a continued success and a pathway of success for the next generation of Latinx uh, to move forward. So John Jay can be a vehicle for you, continue to be to support this institution, continue to take pride in who you are, but more than anything, continue to help someone else achieve the same goals. God bless.